Hey guys, welcome to this episode of Geography Stream. Today we're going to be learning about hot deserts and plant adaptations. There are three aims for the lesson. One, to be able to describe plant adaptations. Two, to explain how the adaptations help the plant to survive. And three, to link the adaptation to the desert climate. So just a quick recap, if we're going to be talking about adaptations, we need to make sure that we know what the temperature is in the desert. So the highest temperature can reach 50 degrees, which is extremely hot in the daytime. But then at night time, the lowest temperatures can be below freezing, so below zero degrees, which makes it incredibly cold. And these temperatures combined with low amounts of rainfall mean that it can be really, really difficult for plants to survive in these harsh conditions. So they need to adapt, they need to change to suit the climate. If you want a little reminder about the climate in the desert, then you can click on the link and watch one of my other videos on the channel. We're now going to look at the prickly pear plant and how it has adapted. Firstly, it's got sharp spikes instead of leaves. These help to reduce water loss and to protect the cactus from predators so that they don't get eaten. They also have these pads to store water during periods of drought. In May, the rainfall can be as low as three millimetres in the tar desert. So it's really important that when it does rain and there's lots of it, that cactus can collect the water, store it, and then use it for periods where there's maybe a drought or there's very dry weather so that it can help the plant to survive. This is a really cool fact about the prickly pear plant. The stomata, which all that means is it's like a pore in the plant. That pore just opens at night time um, which then allows carbon dioxide to be created. Because the temperature's below zero, it's below freezing, it means that the plant doesn't lose as much water. So if that stomata can open at night, the plant doesn't lose as much water and therefore it can continue to grow and survive in the desert. Finally, this plant has got waxy pads to reduce water loss as the rainfall is low. So when we're describing and explaining plant adaptations, if we can say what the plant has got to help it adapt, we can then explain why that helps the plant to continue to grow and survive. And then if we can link it to the climate, that's a really good explanation as to how plants have adapted. Next, the saguaro cactus, quite a popular plant in Mexico, but also found in other deserts around the world too. First of all, it's got downward pointing spines to aim the water at the roots. The temperature can reach up to 50 degrees, so the plant needs a lot of water. The spines also help to cool the outer layer of the plant. This plant has also got a thick trunk to store the water so that the plant can photosynthesize to make energy. There is little rainfall in the deserts from November to April in the Southern Hemisphere, so it's really important that this plant has got somewhere to store water. This plant also has more than 2,000 seeds and they can lay dormant, they can lay sleeping. So this means if the seed doesn't get pollinated for maybe a few months, it doesn't matter because eventually when that plant does get pollinated and there's lots of rainfall and maybe a lower temperature it means that those seeds can then grow into cactus and the plant will continue to survive. Finally this plant has got one tap root three feet long and then it's also got these shorter roots that are closer to the surface to suck up the rainwater. This is obviously because the rainfall is limited in the desert and this helps the plant to grow. Thought I'd just finish this presentation with a few general adaptations. So succulents are plants that store water in their leaves, stems or roots. Some cactus have long roots to help them absorb groundwater. Some plants have horizontal roots that are close to the earth's surface to collect the water. Some flowers have a really awful smell and that's to keep predators away so that they can survive. And finally, some plants have large bulbs that store water. 
If you're wanting to learn more, then check out my channel, Geography Stream. I've also put a link to my next little Geography Stream about desert animal adaptations. Hope you've enjoyed it today. See you again soon.